where there is peace, everything else can flourish. Where there is peace, we are able to understand each other. My name is Justin Auma. I come from Uganda. I'm a biomedical engineer by profession, but I also work under the Episcopal Conference in St. Austin's Parish in Tororo Archdiocese as an interfaith practitioner. For me to be a fellow is a great opportunity to learn, to network, and also to propagate the knowledge I have about interreligious and interfaith practice in my societies where I live. As a Kaisid Fellow, I feel proud to be a part of a network of fellows of practitioners who are interested in building peace amongst people through dialogue. And being a part of this Kaisid Fellowship gives me an opportunity to be able to be part of that group that promotes unity in diversity. Dialogue is an important tool to me because it offers a free space, an opportunity to everyone to bring in their views despite their different opinions, despite their different interests with the aim of coming to a common understanding of each other without judgment and without prejudices. From the time I joined the fellowship program, I must say I have learned a lot. I have learned new skills, I've made new networks, but what is really key for me is that the methods which are being used to teach us, both in person and online methods, are really enriching, but also very participatory. And that, to me, helps me to also adjust on how I conduct my teaching and dialogue sessions with the community. So far, I have learned more about myself in relation to others, but also I have learned about other faiths and other cultures, both traditional practices and religious practices. Knowing that Nepal is rich in diversity in terms of religion, I was really expecting to see these religious sites, learn and understand their practices in relation to one another, and also learn how the different religious sects intersect with one another in terms of peace building and social cohesion. Having learned about the PISID program, the fellowship program, I felt the need to grow, to gain new attitudes and skills in order to improve on my current abilities to conduct and facilitate dialogue in my local communities. One of the key things I'm sure I'm going to benefit from the program is increase knowledge, change in my attitudes and practices, but also gaining network, a network of experts, a network of practitioners that can support my work and equally I support their work and together we achieve a common goal. I'm looking at it creating unity, increasing knowledge but also empowering the community to be able to identify and manage their problems within their local structures. I'm an interfaith practitioner in St. Austin's Parish where I started volunteering way back as a young girl. 
And my motivation starts from the fact that I wanted people to be able to work together despite the differences we have. We have children here, several of them, from different denominations. Every Saturday, she's the one who gathers them together. She has been giving them a lot of teaching. When you talk of uh, in the religious dialogue, she's the champion of this aspect in our parish here. She's really a uniting factor that has helped us to go beyond what we think. She has helped us to open doors to other avenues that her teaching, not only for Catholics, but for the entire human race. My most important responsibility would be to preach the gospel of peace, just not within the parish itself, but also to spread it out to the neighboring society. My role is to be the instrument that spreads that peace by educating and creating awareness in those people I meet in my day-to-day -day life. I love to see people living in harmony. Right from my young age, I've always tried to bring people together. So this is what pushes me to become a volunteer. Where there is conflict, where there is a problem, we try to solve this at a community. And if I can pass this on to the younger generation, it will do good to the society. There is no difference between us. But then, at one moment, I may not talk to him just for a small reason. That emotion is what makes me come up with these lyrics and the tune as well. My hope is that when someone listens to this song, it can make them to think about their life and how they relate with the others. It's a song we're going to use to promote peace. Look at yourself, look at your neighbor, we are one. The young generation needs to learn what a true dialogue is so that they can grow up and probably in the near future we have a society that understands what dialogue is and can easily use dialogue to solve whichever problem that they face. I feel happy when we are seated doing rehearsals like this because it brings unity and a joy among us. We are able to become one person to break the enmity, break each and every evil spirit that would come I mean, just us because of different religions. I really love being part of this team and making new friends through music. We keep on uniting ourselves. Divided we fall and united we stand. Just in the lyrics, like we sing, what brings us together is love. So if we can love one another, extend it to others, I think the world can be better. There is already so much trouble in the world that we don't need to trouble ourselves more by living with differences, coming together in peace, in a special way using music to unite us is a very unique thing. At the end of the day, we have to send a message and the message doesn't care whether you are young, you're old, you are which denomination, but the message has to sell to everyone. We're able to share this with any other person we meet from here outside there. The new generation needs to know that where there is peace, everything else can flourish. Where there is peace, we are able to understand each other. The most important lesson I want to convey to the workshop is that we need to empty ourselves and be ready to fill ourselves with information from different people, digest this information and use it to promote peace in the society. And at the same time, I would like to see that the people who are attending the workshops, the people who are attending the activities and initiatives develop that love for dialogue develop the love and interest in helping the person next to them without segregation and uh, without any fears. What we have learned today in this workshop is that 
we are going to apply the same knowledge working as a team to solve whatever problem which may affect the community. It should not stop here, even if justice is not there. But we should carry on this idea of working under interreligious council, such that it brings us together as religious people. Such that whatever comes does not separate us. And we should continue working as a team. We should continue respecting one another as we've been doing in this workshop. The second part of my initiative involved different religious leaders who attended our training workshop under the theme Interfaith Response to the Negative Effects of COVID-19 in the Local Communities. The aim of that was to bring the local leaders down in the communities to form a team that can go and help identify problems in the community and work with the community within their means to help and mitigate the challenges that the communities have faced due to COVID-19. We will listen to the head of the home as the father, the mother and the child affected by the scourge of COVID-19. The child dropped out of school simply because she was aging. I would like to request my friends, part of the team, to come back and see home and then sit with them and see how they can help the children. What we have learned from Justin is that we need to work as a team. In case we identify any problem, we should come together and say that we work upon it and the remedy is good. COVID-19, as the disease is reducing, people are getting vaccinated, people are trying to follow the standard operating procedures, but the effects of COVID, early childhood uh, marriages, early pregnancies, school dropouts, loss of livelihoods, family breakups, that is a problem that is going to create a negative effect in the community for long, so I feel Tackling it at this point would be very useful for the community. After the initiative, they have come to the realization that they can actually work together. Through the work in the areas, we saw this team that had built just from nowhere, now they have decided to form a team and they even have the plan to continue working together too help the communities. The mere fact that they were there, they were open, they contributed, and they had a way forward gave me the indication that we've started a journey that is not going to end. My project in Uganda in the near future, I believe will create awareness about dialogue in my society, in the community, right from the grassroots. It could help us to have task force of religious leaders where there are real problems that are facing people. It's a, a very great honor that I learned something, I participated, and I felt I have also delivered what I think it could be missing out of this program. I thank Justin for involving me uh, such that I can express my feeling and I can add on my ideas towards this situation that has been there. One of the most important tools that the program has given me is the ability to facilitate dialogue. I can identify where there's a challenge and I can bring the parties together and help them to dialogue on the issue and come up with possible solutions. I can now start initiatives which are cost effective, which are directed towards the community needs. The program has also helped me to be able to identify interfaith actors who can also partner in helping in the same cause. And I've developed a network that can be helpful to me as I implement my initiatives and also plan programs as far as promotion of peace and social cohesion is concerned. Our country, Uganda, actually needs a lot of interreligious dialogue. Uganda is a multi-religious country where we have different religions. And at the same time, we have a lot of conflicts. 
that stems from poverty, that stems from civil wars. We have people with post-traumatic stress disorder. If religious leaders can come together in dialogue and help the communities to dialogue, if religious leaders preach the gospel of peace in every available crowd, in every available forum, people will be able to listen to them. It is possible to achieve peace if everybody could think the same way, if everybody could look at the friend as a brother or a sister. I know there is hope because promotion of peace and social cohesion starts from small units and spreads to the bigger units. I can use the skills I've learned to spread that word of peace to people, but especially to be a living example of peace uh, through my actions and through my interactions with people. People should see promotion of peace in whatever I do. If I can start the message of peace and my neighbor starts peace, then peace in the world is possible. We just need to remove the selfishness, remove the judgment, and we journey together along the path of peace. When I was told I was going to take part in this program, I had a mixture of feelings. At first I was excited, and then I got a bit scared because I did not know what to expect. But the enthusiasm to learn made me eager to be part of the program. Justin Auma was selected out of 525 applicants to be part of the 2022 International Cohort. She was selected due to the fact that she met the criteria to become a Kaisit Fellow in terms of being a practitioner of interreligious dialogue, having multiplying effect, having access to grassroots levels, as well as educating those who will become future religious leaders. Before I joined the program, I had a lot of expectations. My knowledge about interreligious dialogue was limited and yet I thought I knew much but after the training I feel my perception about interreligious dialogue has improved. This program has changed my life in a big way. I have achieved a lot. I have formed a network of friends as an interfaith practitioner. My dialogue facilitation skills have improved greatly. What touched me most in this program was the opportunity to visit the different sacred sites, including my own. It formed a new understanding of the other faiths. It helped me to understand why they do what they do. And for me as an interfaith practitioner, that helps me to work with a multi-faith society. Being able to visit different sacred sites, which I had never visited, and to feel welcome despite my fears, to learn from the different religious leaders in these sites, that has enriched me a lot. These kind of initiatives help us to understand in a deeper way the communities we work with. But it is also a learning experience. For every step we've taken in the program, there's always something new to learn and it changes your way of thinking. It has given me particularly a new approach to interreligious dialogue, and hence I feel I'm a better person. Justin's participation to the Fellows Program was remarkable because she brought an added value with her own unique personality, with her humbleness, and always left the participants with powerful impressions about herself, about the work that she has been doing on the ground. Being able to engage with an interfaith individual doing religious activism, 
religious work or theologically engaging with religion is very enriching. Learning from people like Justine has helped me enrich even theologically and how in my own community, I, through her learning, I understand how I could overcome my challenges. On the first night we were together, I remember, I sat down next to her and we began to have a conversation. And by the end of the conversation, she said to me, ah, you are my good neighbor. And that perfectly captured her way of engaging with others. The most important thing I've learned in the program is that we are all different, we are all unique, but these differences and the uniqueness can all be utilized to come up with social cohesion. If we can only understand, listen, and learn what the other person's belief is. The mere fact that we come from different identities, different religions, different education backgrounds, different cultures, this forms a rich port where from which we can get experiences, learn from each other's stories, each other's histories, each other's experience, and build our own understanding, and henceforth help in understanding others and also understanding the society as a whole. As long as opportunity appears, every religious leader from any sect should attend this interreligious dialogue program because it is an avenue to build capacity and especially to understand other people whom we've never interacted with. For today's graduation, I expect to just celebrate with my friends a year-long achievement after a long training. I just want to have fun and celebrate this achievement. To be part of the Kaisid Network right now for me is opportunities, is friendship. It's a group of technical support, both from fellow Kaisid graduates, the alumni, and also the Kaisid Technical Office. Justin will continue her relationship with both the fellows and Kaisid, and she will scale up her initiatives and projects on institutional levels. And she will not only promote dialogue within her own local context, but she will also contribute to enhance dialogue within the African region. After graduating from this program, my most important responsibility is to be one, a living example but most importantly, to disseminate the information that I've got from this training. For the future, I am going to encourage more people to participate in the Kaisid Fellowship Program, but at the same time, I have the challenge to sustain the initiatives we've already started in the community. This program is going to help me to foster interreligious dialogue in my country because it's offering me resources that I can use to refer the participants I work with, but above all, I am able to get technical support from my colleagues and also from the Kaisid staff who are always ready to help through different challenges along our work. I wish for Justine good health, good success, family love, and the growth of her initiatives because the work that she is doing both in the healthcare sector and in the interreligious dialogue sector are essential for the well-being both of her community and for us in the entire world. I wish Justin to remain who she is in terms of sense of humor, humility, humbleness, professionalism, and the very humanistic approach that she has when it comes to decision-making processes. I'm not leaving this program the same as I joined it. I'm richer in my knowledge. I'm richer with a network of friends. I'm richer with a network of technical people whom I can work with. And for me, that is a great success. Above all, I'm a better listener and I have grown both physically and psychologically through the program of the one year of the Kaisid training.
Change.